Life happens quickly, like mountains in the background. And you wake up one day, and you don't know how you got there. And you wonder, how long have I been asleep? Where have I been? And nothing is recognizable. Everything is different from the last time you woke. Years have passed, and years are passing, and you suddenly know with absolute precision that you will die. And then comes the choice to go back to sleep and hope that next time you wake, you will have resolved yourself and you will be happy. Or you choose to stay awake, to struggle with these unsatisfactory surroundings, to create something, anything, to love, I was born of contrary winds. They name hurricanes after me. If you hide from death, you hide from life. My name is Emily. the day that changed your life. Time stopped. Nothing remained. But that room. Your wife. And me. And it came to you. You were a father. And you knew nothing. You said you stared into a great emptiness and you took a step. And everything you read, all roads and rivers of thought, led you back to the one same truth. You had a daughter. And you knew nothing. She always said you were quiet. And that the year after I was born, you were quieter still. Never going out. Never saying why. Just locking yourself in your study night and day. Until one night, without warning, you spoke. Dead or alive. Some people just walk around like they've been alive for a hundred years. And they're going to be alive for a hundred more. You see them strapping on their armour. They can't hide the fear in their eyes. You spoke about the things you'd read for the last year. You spoke about being a father. You spoke about swimming in the ocean when you were a boy. You spoke in a way you'd never spoken before. She said it was like watching a man giving birth to himself. You told everyone you had a new teacher, teaching you the most important things in life. I was your teacher, and you were mine. They called you a weirdo. They're right. I was reading a book. They're still right. Come here.
Read that. Weird suggesting something supernatural or uncanny. And here? From the old English weird meaning destiny, fate, or the power to control destiny. Yes. So? So? They don't know that. But now you do. That's what it felt like when you spoke to me. And the world is new and small and large and expanding. And your heart is beating fast in your chest, but only because you're alive. You started teaching at a local school. Life for beginners. We blindly walked down roads built by others, and the biggest tragedy of all is that we believe the great lie. That we will live forever, that we will never die, but all roads lead to death. And having traveled down roads built by others, we arrive at death, having never truly lived. You told people to live, swim, fight, love, but it wasn't until you started telling them to have sex that you really got noticed. You said people didn't have enough sex, and that instead of going on expensive holidays, people should book into local hotels and just have sex. This is who we are! Come on! And before anyone decided you were a threat to the establishment, it was too late. You had made it. The mainstream had embraced you. But really, you were only warming up. We've been taught to hide, death, from each other. We find so many ways to spend our time. Watching, preparing, planning how we would live our lives when we were ready. Are you ready? Everyone! Emily will be joining our class as of today. Now, would you like to say a few words about yourself, Emily? Streets go on forever, but none lead to the sea. On and on forever, but none lead to the sea. Swim down into the deep. Down, down, down into the deep. streets. Steve and June aren't bad foster parents. I've had worse. I know I'm only here because it's June's idea. She kills me every day with the kindness and the chit-chat and the never-deviating freshness. And every day, she fills the house with the pressure to be happy like Christmas. Clean towel, dear. Thanks. Until it bears down from the roof and I cannot breathe. She's different. I fell in love with a dancer. She spun in the air like a dance of light. 
and watching her I felt more detached and yet more aware of everything than ever before. She danced until I felt hot and full of feeling. All the way home, she thought I was sick, with tiredness or the cold. But it was love. Nothing, dear? I'm sure it'll come. Wait for school. There have been others, but none like her. I wanted to disappear into the pores of her pale skin. If you've ever been electrocuted, you'll understand. Your whole body becomes your heart and then it stops. You feel alive and dead at the same time. Fill my head with the future, fill my eyes with the sky. Left behind, but I've never felt more alive. It was like that. It should be easy, but it's hard to leave. Well, the radiance which was once so bright be now forever taken from my sight. Though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass, of glory in the flower. We will grieve not, rather find strength in what remains behind. Copy books. Explore this stanza under the following headings. Tone, diction, and form. Do you not understand the exercise? I do. Then what seems to be the problem? No problem. Well, perhaps you think because you're new the same rules don't apply that you deserve special treatment like a little play school princess. <laughs> no. Well, what then? I just don't want to do what you've asked. Oh. Then perhaps you were unaware what you perceived to be a request was in fact an order. No, I was simply exercising my right not to follow orders. Isn't that what you're trying to teach us? Free will. So that we don't become Nazis. <laughs> Shh. Are you smart, Alec? Is that it? I don't want to cut up this poem. Why not? Because when you cut something up, you kill it. Well, perhaps you'd like to elucidate the rest of us and how best to approach this verse. Wordsworth is talking about sex. <laughs> sex that he had in the grass with a girl. Most likely his first. And hers. He's talking about no such thing. Sex that he had with a French girl, Annette Vallon, the daughter of a barber surgeon by whom he had an illegitimate daughter, Anne Caroline. He was wildly in love, but he was so ashamed at what he'd done that he abandoned both her and the child. He felt so guilty that he never wrote openly about love or sex. He just buried it in references to nature. What well, though the radiance which was once so bright be now forever taken from my sight. Though nothing can bring back the hour, splendor in the grass, glory in the flower, we will grieve not, rather find strength in what remains behind.
He loved her. But because of the moors of the day, he abandoned both her and the child. And he never saw his daughter again. What's wrong with you? Leave her alone. I can take care of myself, thanks. Took away the light. They told me she'd gone to other places, better places. But I knew she hadn't. She always knew where I was, no matter where I was in the house. Now I couldn't feel her anywhere. They told me she'd gone somewhere. But if she had, I would have gone there too. She was nowhere. And now no one knew where I was. When you frown underwater, it makes a noise. But you cannot cry. Sometimes I can hear it. Like a hurricane. Like an underwater wind. The music. I know They always listened to it loud when I wasn't in the car. Can go said it made them feel young. Some lie, some lie. My father kept everything, all lecture notes and half scribbled thoughts in the boot of our car. When they hit it spread across the road in a wave of white noise. Everything you worried about, everything you ever feared, gone. In an instant. In the face of something much worse than you could have ever imagined. I was at home, waiting for them. It was my birthday. Jumping in at the deep end if you can't swim. What's wrong with you? It's my birthday. Oh, for God's sake. Go on, you're done for the day. Break. Okay, guys, let's get a move on. Hi. I'm from your school. I told you I can take care of myself. Yeah, but um, you didn't look very happy, so I followed you home. Uh, and I, I got you this because I wanted to help you feel better. You better come in. It is your birthday, though, isn't it? <laughs> Phew! 
I think it might have been a joke. Or, like, you don't have like a religious belief against gifts. Because I don't know you very well, I I didn't know what to buy you, so I, I picked something I like. Have you read it? Yes. It's an old copy. Yes. Grand says they're the best because they've got the memory of hands on them. It was hers. She gave it to me. What's your name? Arden. Happy birthday! Oh God, you don't want it. So, I'll, I'll see you around. myself. We moved over last year. I'm half Irish. My granny is Irish. So is my father, obviously. It's her son. I work in a video shop. Oh. So, you like swimming? <laughs> this is a uh... nice house. Yeah. Would you like to come in? See you tomorrow. Hey. Hi, Emily. Still nothing, dear? Why do we smile in photographs? Do we just forget? Not knowing how we felt. Just that we were told to smile. It says, easily distracted. 
Yeah, but the tea's a complete cow. Don't talk back to your mother. I spent less time at your so-called job than with your mad grandmother. <coughs> See you later. <coughs> Get your bag, we're going. Yes. Hold on. Hi. Hi, can I talk to you for a minute? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Last thing I've ever asked for everything. The other day you said you wanted to help me. Yeah, of course. What is it? I'm leaving. Leaving? Now. My father's in a psychiatric institution and my mother died on my birthday. That's why I was weird with you the other day at my house. I'm being honest with you now because you're the only person I know in the city and I trust you and I don't know why. My father writes me a letter once a month and on my birthday and no letters came and I'm worried. So I'm going north to break him out of the nut house that they've put him in, but I can't do it alone. I need your help. You should know that if you do want to help, then we have to go now because if I'm not there for breakfast in the morning, my foster parents call social services. They have no choice. And, well, I need to get a head start. So, that's the deal. We go now. Will you help me? <laughs> Forget it. Where are you going? I'm going. Aren't you forgetting something? I'm leaving. Pick up your fucking school bag and get in the car. What are you gonna do? Hit me? Hmm? Because if you do, you better knock me out. Going. Are you running away? No. I don't think so. There's something I've got to do to help her. Well, that's good. Anyone can run away. Your father's been doing it his whole life. Mm. You can't go anywhere in that school uniform. You're drenched. Your grandfather proposed to me in this suit on top of the Empire State Building. That was the last time he wore it. Said it had done its duty after that. I can't take this crown. Why? Your grandfather's in the ground. Come on.
help me. Get in. It's quite comfy. It will never start. Try it. I keep it oiled with the full tank of petrol your grandfather showed me how. In case I ever needed to escape. Everything is in the boot. <laughs> I'll be blue, you be white. What? Cars. One? No thanks. No problem. Just head north. Sorry about your mom. So what is the deal with your dad? He's a writer. Cool. Yeah, cool. Not really. No. So, where are you from? We moved around a lot. I went from school to school. Tilly took me out all together. Said it was a waste of time. We were always traveling. Book tours. Lectures. We never talked about her. For him it was all about living in the moment. Renouncing the past. But I would hear him at night. He became obsessive about his work. Not sleeping. Barely eating. Day and night. He became obsessed with the idea that on a molecular level, there was no difference between us and a blade of grass. It haunted him. He started telling me there were no limits. That 
the important thing was to live as you felt like living. And he did. Good morning. And every day he would go further and further. Look at this. There were reports of unusual behavior. And the locals started sending messages. So we sent our own message back. But it got worse. It doesn't matter if I'm a blade of grass, or she's a blade of grass, or I'm a blade of grass because the same molecules, it's the same molecules. It's, she's got the same molecules. I've got the same molecules. We've got the same molecules as a blade of grass. It's the same, it's just the same. She's got the same, she's all, she's all together. She's all together and I'm all apart. She's apart, she's just floating just apart, and I'm all twisted and together, I'm all twisted together, because they're all, all the molecules are all together. We're just the same, we're just the same. We're just the same. Dad. It was the incident in Dublin that eventually did it. He said that he was happy, that he'd realized the secret of everything that life and death were connected, and that he'd finally let my mother go, set her free. But they didn't see it like that. And they got a distant relative to sign the papers. Let me say goodbye to my daughter. Please, Uncle! Ellen, nothing can separate us. You understand? Not these people. Nobody or nothing. Do you know why? Because we've got the sea inside us, haven't we? Look. Beautiful daughter. Just remember who you are, okay? Remember who you are. You're my little weirdo, aren't you? No, You're my no, little weirdo. No, 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 him at first, but he just became more and more distant. He stopped leaving his room, he stopped calling me by my name. Emily was my mother's name. And in the end they just said the visits were too upsetting for him, that I reminded him too much of her, that he needed time. Great. I mean, what about you? I was passed around the family at first. Ended up at my uncle's. They had this son. He was a few years older than me. My cousin. He'd read some of Dad's books and he thought, maybe we could put them into practice. Didn't work out too well. Ran out of family after that. But wherever I was, Dad never stopped writing to me. The letters became just fragments, but we were talking. And then they just stopped altogether. I have this friend whose brother died, and now his family, they photoshop his face into all of their family pictures. 
I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I... <laughs> That's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm with you alone, I keep complete control. I want to tell you how I feel And when it comes to it, I don't And all of that's about to change The truth is buried in my veins Deep down I let the feeling grow And now I'll spell it out in bold Like this. Oh, wait. She said try the food. So what is the plan? I go in to visit him. You cause distraction. I get him out. That's it? Yeah. What if they don't let you see him? They have to. I'm his daughter. But what if he's not? Well. He's fine. When my, when my father was a student, he said he loved books. All he ever did, eat, drink, and sleep books. And one day he got a job, one of the big city bookshops. And he just said he was really happy. He used to smell books. <laughs> That's how much he loved them. His favorite thing was the smell of a new book. And one day they put me in charge of the deliveries. He went down to do a stock take of all the new books coming in on these pallets. There was thousands of them. Each one with hundreds of copies of the same book sitting in these massive blocks of colour. And he just... He just saw them all as this big giant jigsaw puzzle. And a few days later, he quit. He said he couldn't look at a new book in the same way without seeing a big print and blade slicing through them. And they'd lost that special feeling. It smelled industrial. It doesn't read anything now. That's really sad. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I don't know where I was going there. Point of view. Mm, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. A fact is a fact. Well, where do you think they come from? They just are. They're the way things are. We're walking down this aisle. Fact. No, that's just your point of view. We may not be in a supermarket. I may not even exist. One plus one equals two. Listen, everything that you call a fact is just a bunch of people getting together, agreeing on something, and then calling it a fact. That's why facts change. People change their minds. The world is flat, the world is round. I mean, you can't really blame people for wanting to believe in facts. But 
without another point of view to agree with us, like, say, an alien, we'll never know if our opinion on anything is right or wrong. And even if we had an alien, that's just two points of view. And just because facts are opinions, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. They're usually right. It's just when we forget that they're all just well thought out opinions, that's when people start doing stupid things like making atomic bombs. They think facts are facts. We have to do it just to show that we could. Facts are just the excuse for everything. Sun will rise tomorrow. Is that a fact? No, it's a point of view of a human being, me at the moment. And it's a good point of view, I think, because I think the sun will rise tomorrow. But will the sun rise tomorrow without me, in I my don't, opinion? No, I don't know, Emily. You're fucking with my head the whole way around with this stuff. What do you want me to say? I don't know, because... I don't know. Are you happy now? What? You make me... F you make me feel stupid. Sorry. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Just the flowers, please. perfect life and perfect parents. You don't know anything about my family. You don't ask, so so you don't know. You're not the only one with problems and just you're so wrapped up in your own. You're not just a puppet. I know. You don't know everything. Listen, I don't know if you're thinking that something's gonna happen, but it won't. You offer to help me. I don't owe you anything. You don't owe me anything. I'll be blue. I'll be... One. I'll be... Really? Gee, <laughs> <Keep> I'm <that> <laughs>
Are you lost? No. Uh huh. No. License? Yep. Um. Holy shit! Excuse me. Ah, um, um I've, I've left it. It's at home. It's it's at home. Okay. Hold on a sec. Drive. Drive. What? He'll take us in for sure. Uh, calm down. He's just gonna go. No, get no. His what? He's just gonna let us go. Yes, we haven't done anything wrong. We've run away, and we robbed a shop. <sighs> Harden, please. I need to see my father. in this country, in the cities, in the streets, in the fields and in the trees, a sadness we cannot hide. Or I'd like a flat white day of pale skies and a real kiss inside an old house. By the seaside, you can take off my blouse But take it from me, I'm a disorderly And you'd be off better Writing someone else's yeah, love letter Cause I'm always on the road I'm starving You're always starving Wolf on route. Sorry, was I supposed to understand that? We'll find it. What's your family like? They're okay. If okay means totally fucked up. I don't always remember it being like this. You know, it's weird. I often wonder how long it would take me to grow out of being like them. Or is the damage done?
the front on. Okay, okay, get out of there. Is there no bottom? Huh? Is there no bottom to put on the bottom? Yeah, probably. Oh. Huh? They hand me that pole if I just cut one. Ever done that? Are you finished in there? Or is your condom too big? <laughs> Don't. Sorry. Would you look at this queer prick? Are you finished in there? Or can someone else have a go? Come and get lost. <laughs> Mr. Big Man! <laughs> you telling me to get lost? Yeah, I'm just get lost. <laughs> I don't want to fight you guys. Oh. Uh, you ready? Oh, oh. You posh little prick. <laughs> I told you he was a puss! <laughs> Boyfriends run off. But it doesn't mean we can't have some crack. Fuck off. What? What? Get out. You're right. Yeah? This is not even real. This is my grandfather's gun. He fought in the Civil War. You know anything about that, you thick bogger fuck! No, I didn't. I hate bullies. Now fuck off! Fuck off! Go. That you came through Cut the corn Washed it clean Everything that's ever gone before Is like a blur And it's all because of you And now I find The city's like a stranger to me I once was fooled by Cadillacs and honey Now no one feels like you 
not like you, not like you, not like you. Oh. Even though the flower fades, something takes its place. Marching band or a sunny day, pretty eyes or a pretty face. Building stuff about the grounds. Okay, James Bond. What's the plan? for my father's room. I thought they said it was this way. What's his name, dear? Robert Egan. And you are? Emily, Emily Egan. 114, top of the stairs, down on the left. Thank you. friend will be in when he's finished playing with the guards. <laughs> I often think the world is turned inside out, Emily, that they send some of the sanest people here to me. Have you read Plato? Oh, well, he wrote this great piece called The Allegory of the Cave. All these people are sitting in rows in a cave, staring at the shadows flickering on the wall. Ah. They are bound to the seats by chains. For them, the shadows are the only reality. Here, you see the people chained, staring at shadows, just like a multiplex. But one man struggles with the chains. 
frees himself and finds a path up to the light. He stands in the sun and he's enlightened. And that could be the end of the man's story. But this man walks back into the cave, back into the shadow, back to free people. This man who saw the light and instead of basking in it, returned to help others, is, according to Plato, the philosopher. This man is your father. The problem with all this shepherding of people out of the darkness is that the philosopher himself, blinded by the glare of the sun or by grief, can lose his grip on what is real and what is illusion. My father's not crazy. This place is a cave for many people, Emily. A hiding place from the world. There's no shame in it. Life but Dad wasn't hiding. You locked him up. Emily, your father was a voluntary patient here. You're lying. Why would I lie? Because I was there when they took him. Yes, Robert was initially committed, but after a month of observation, he elected to become an inpatient. Emily, you've got to understand. Stop saying my name. You don't know me. We don't hold sane people against their will. Sometimes people just break, even our parents. We spent the summers here. The woods swell sometimes in the winter. Help?
dad. We should get a fire going. He doesn't come. He will. Why'd you really say yes to this? Was it just so you could stick your hand up my t-shirt? That's stupid. I know why people do things. Is that what you believe? People lie. People leave. I don't know why we came here. Oh, we can go back. You don't have a clue, do you? <laughs> no. Nope. Yet again, I don't understand. Look, not everyone lies. Some people just help. And you know what? I. I don't know why I'm here either. You do the fire. looking for you. I came to get you out. So, Dr. Golding, Dad. Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to tell you myself. You let me believe. All this time. You left me with those people. I know. I don't expect you to ever forgive me, but I was not good for you. you needed I needed you! I was 14! You said nothing could separate us. But you did. All better now. I don't know what I am. I just knew it was time to leave there and wanted to find you. Why? Why now? I don't know. You don't know. You don't know. The goddamn Wizard of Oz doesn't know. What a joke. Shouldn't have wasted my time looking for you.
the deeper. Down, down, down into the deeper. Swim down into the deep. This is Arden. Arden's my dad. Hi. He's my boyfriend. Ah. I have to go change. Is it done? Yeah. Find some coffee and heat it up on the stove. It smells. Yeah. Can I uh, borrow a shower or something? Yeah, sure. Stairs on the right hand side, there's a cupboard. Help yourself. June's a good woman. the world of you, Emily. OK, 
came looking for you to say I'm sorry, Emily. For everything. And that I'm here for you. If you'll have me. I only know one thing. I'm an old fool. And I love you. Sleep well? Hmm? Coffee? Yes, please. Thanks. I'm being much of a dad, have I? You're not dead yet. Exactly what I was thinking this morning when I woke up. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna stay with June. You should stay here. Do some writing. Yeah, good idea. I read a book. My time in the nut house. <laughs> <laughs> I'd read that. Mm. <laughs> you can always come and visit, you know. Just come any time you want. I will. June will be getting worried about me. Lover boy. He brings me coffee. If you've ever been electrocuted, you'll understand. There is a sadness in this country. In the cities and the streets. In the fields and the trees. A sadness we cannot hide.
the fact of losing the ones we love. The fact of being alone. Emily! The facts are only points of view, and points of view can change. Life happens quickly, like mountains in the background. Then you wake up one day, and you don't know how you got there. And you wonder, where have I been? How did I get here? And nothing is recognizable. Everything is different from the last time you woke. And you smile in a photograph, just because you're happy. And the voice that is speaking is suddenly your own. What we called love, 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 I wait up. To see if you're alright And I hope waiting in the darkness For my whole life See the funny thing about it Is I have never wasted time And I have never thought about it And I have lied But I'm trying to do my best But you might never notice And I'm standing like a stag beside a tree And there's pounding in my head I simply can't control it But I hope you love it calm is guaranteed since you alone 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 and I reach out Pluck it from the sky And I have waited for that bird to pass For my whole life I see the funny thing about it Is I have only wasted mine I have always thought about you And I have died And I'm trying to do my best But you might never notice When I'm standing like a stag beside a tree And it's pounding in my head I simply can't control it And I hope your love it comes is guaranteed Cause it's you alone 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 It's you alone